Hi guys, thanks thanks for joining in. Uh, we will we'll, we will be starting in few minutes.
Uh, good evening to all and welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar. Uh, guys, we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. So they don't miss out on anything. Uh, till the time I have shared the links for our social media platform. As well as the community links and the event page where you can go and check our upcoming events. On emerging technology. Also, I have shared the YouTube channel link. You can go and subscribe to a YouTube channel. You will get various uh, emerging technology videos. And training on that channel. So make sure you go and follow us and subscribe on all the social media platforms. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Chaitali this side, your host for this webinar. I welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar. As all the participants has been kept on mute, so if you have any doubt or questions, uh, you can use the chat window. The event sponsor uh, for this webinar is Synergetics. So Synergetics Learning is India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. Uh, we are ready with our top class learning solutions. 
uh, that can be made to fit in uh, fit every requirement in every sector across the industry around the globe. Then we have expansive greenfield solutions, uh, which includes persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification plus add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution and architecting solution. So these are the solutions which Synergetics provide trainings and certification on. So today's webinar uh, is comes under the emerging technology training. Then today's webinar is organized by ETC community that is emerging technology community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies. You just need to follow our meetup group. Uh, this is the meetup uh, group. The link will be provided to you all in the chat box. So you just have to simply install the meetup app on your phone or on your device and just follow our community to get the updates on upcoming emerging technology webinars. The code of conduct, please note that no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. Also, if you have any technical question related to the topic, you can use the chat box to ask your question. After this webinar, if anyone need the revision, uh, you just simply need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will try to post this webinar on YouTube. Also, those who have attended this, attended this webinar will get the recordings on their register mail ID. Today's speaker for this webinar is Mr. Navjoti Barua. He has years of experience in delivering the training on certification as well as on emerging technologies. He is an MCT, Microsoft Certified Trainer, and currently works with Synergetics as an AVP of Technology Department. Then agenda for this webinar. So. You will get an overview of the topic and more. Also, the upcoming ETT webinar details will be posted in the chat box. So interested participants can go and register themselves for the upcoming webinars. Also, make sure you follow us on our social media platforms. As I mentioned, the links for all the social media platforms in the chat box. So go and follow us on all the platforms. You will get the relevant updates regarding the webinars, workshop and certification trainings, which we do. Now I like to hand over the mic to Navjoti, sir, so he can go ahead with the webinar. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Satali, for your introduction. Okay, so let me get my PPT here. All right. Very good evening to all of you. Thank you for joining this uh, webinar. So hope you can hear me and hope you can see my presentation. OK, great. All right. Thanks for the response. So let me set the context of today's webinar. 
as you can see on the screen, the title of this webinar is Instrumenting Microservice with the Open Telemetry for Observability. Now, when you talk about telemetry of any application, or here we are going to talk about from the microservice point of view, but the telemetry is a common term that is being used in context of monitoring. So essentially what we are going to discuss, if our application is running, maybe on the cloud or maybe on the on-premises, but monitoring of that application is extremely crucial for all of us because by monitoring an application only we get to know how my application is running how my application is behaving how my application is performing so it is only possible by monitoring an application, by taking data out of this application and keep analyzing those data to more about an application's any given point in time. So what state the application currently or what state the application had before? So it is all about knowing more about an applications by getting the telemetries, the data. But in this uh, webinar, we are going to talk how we can extract or how we can retrieve those telemetry from microservice based application. So hope you must and uh, hope you know about the microservice architectural pattern. But yes, if it is not also, it is just an architectural pattern. I'm going to go and talk on that going forward, but you'll get to know how microservices are different from the traditional deployment. So to summarize the context, so we are going to explore how we can collect telemetries from an application, from a microservice, in order to understand how my application or how my microservice is behaving or running or working for us or for our customers. My name is Navjuti Barua. I'm an MCT, Microsoft Certified Trainer, and I'm an AVP at Synergetics. So what are the agendas topic that we are going to cover during this webinar? So we'll talk about application monitoring and the cloud. We'll talk about the telemetries as I discussed the telemetries from the first DAC. Then we'll be talking about a particular tool or you can say as a set of SDKs or an API who will allow us to collect the telemetries from an underlying application and analyze subsequently. And that would be open telemetry, what we, what we are going to discuss today is in webinar. And how this open telemetry as a set of API or an SDK can be incorporated with our application. That would be all about instrumentation. So injecting those API and SDK based code into your application and start collecting data from your application while your application is up and running, whether it is in on premise or maybe in the cloud. And finally, we'll end this session with a demo like to make you understand 
what is open telemetry SDK, how we can write a code by using open telemetry SDK, and how am I supposed to collect the telemetries? And how am I supposed to create a dashboard? So what we have collected from our underlying application. So today's webinar would be pretty clean and simple because it's not going to get us in any kind of complexity because it's a very common factors for all the application developer. The one point in time they have to keep monitoring their application while they will be running in the production environment, whether it is on the cloud or maybe in the on premise. So the question is that how we are going to get those data, how we are going to get those telemetries, what I am repeatedly referring to. So this is the context and this is what we are going to explore. Now, when you talk about application monitoring, so what do you understand? So why do we have to monitor an application? I have already explained that because knowing more about an application will definitely give us added advantage to improve on the functionalities or maybe improve on the overall the growth of the application. But if you do not know how my application is running, so what are the challenges the application is facing at the time of running that application? So I won't be able to go and fix those problem or eliminate those problem or remove those problem and to make a better applications going forward. So application monitoring is extremely important for all of us. It is more important when our application is going to run on the unknown infrastructure like cloud. So it may be a Microsoft Azure cloud or it may be a Google or it may be AWS cloud. We can target our application to run anywhere in any cloud vendors. But whatever the infrastructure the cloud vendor is going to give us to run my application. It's not ours. We don't have control on those infrastructure. So we have only control of. We have only control on our application on our data. So why? we should not go and monitor our applications to know about the infrastructure along with the applications parameters telemetries so there are different point that application monitoring is going to address but among them, there are few very important point the application monitoring always try to address, like for example, application availabilities. Now, when you deploy an application in a cloud environment, we know that we can deploy anywhere geographically because the cloud vendor has set up their data center across the globe. I can go and connect to any data center from a particular geographic region and I can deploy my application and make them up and running. But I, I need to have a monitoring engine to keep telling me wherever I have deployed that application, the application is currently available. That if my client comes to get access to an application, they are going to go and get access without getting messages like server not found or a 404, something like that. The application not found because those kind of messages my customer is going to receive when my application is not available due to any region, due to the outrage in the data center. You know, it could be any region on what basis your applications may be not available. 
But once you monitor this application constantly to know the availability of an application, if something goes wrong with my applications, I can have an alternative plan to make my application highly available to my end customers. But if I do not know whether my application availability data, application availability matrix, so we won't be able to do anything on that parameters. I need to know the bugs and errors. I need to know how my application is using the resources. Like for example, the resources could be CPU or a disk or a memories. If I want to know how my application is utilizing the CPU, the compute power that I have given to that particular applications by having a specific infrastructure. Parameter related to the performance. And eventually the factor that affect the user experience at the end of the day. So how user is experiencing with your application, like the application is getting downloaded in your browser pretty quickly. That would be one of the user experiences. Applications can bring you data pretty quickly. That could be another user experiences. Applications can respond to your queries, respond to your command pretty quickly. So it doesn't matter where this application is being deployed across the globe, but you may access these applications from anywhere. But you are not going to compromise with the performance parameters that you are expecting to get on the application. So it's a day to day basis. The people are experiencing their. You know, activities or interactions they're doing with their underlying their application. So they get to know which application is fast and which application is slow. Now, today if I go and see application performance monitoring become the key. Why? Because today we started developing more complex architecture based application. Like the microservice architecture is one of them. So what we do in microservice? your application would be broken into a small tiny part. And they can be deployed independently on the cloud in a distributed environment. So your application component is going to be distributed, going to be deployed in a distributed pattern. So in that scenarios, every single component need to be monitored independently. Like suppose I have got two APIs. One API will get data from the table. Another API will go and add that data into a table. If I want to do these two operation as a two independent operations, and if I want to monitor them explicitly in a microservice architecture, and we can come back and create some kind of dashboard and start comparing with the multiple requests, start analyzing those requests. When my request took long time, what was the problem? Why? took long time for a particular request that we made on a particular microservice, which is being act as an API within your application. So you have to deal with the multiple microservices like that, what I'm talking about from a single application. The complexity of deployment and monitoring will increase because it is no more like a single monolithic application anymore. 
So your monolithic application would be broken into a microservice based architecture application. So you get more components. And get more complexity to manage them, to monitor them. And not only that, because when you want to complete the transactions, there may be multiple microservice involved to complete a transactions within your application. And I want to know the complete workflow. When it was started and when it is end. And how many microservice was participating in that entire process and I have the workflow. Right, so that is the point what we must understand that the importance of monitoring while we will be working with the complex architecture based on microservice deployment. And now since we have been talking about the cloud multiple times, so you are moving your application from on-premise to cloud and when you take them to the cloud you are moving from one type of infrastructure to another type of infrastructure maybe sometime you go and deploy it in a pass platform as a service and sometime you go and deploy them in infrastructure as a service so the underlying infrastructure would be different for both now what to monitor in this two situation we must understand to know about more about an application not only application the underlying resources that application is going to consume going forward and the frequent deployment like continuous integration and deployment this is something which is part of the DevOps and the developer is completely aware of this. They need to continuously upgrade their applications, continuously deploy their applications to target the continuously monitoring with the new features that they have incorporated to the existing application and then subsequently deployed in the target and one. So what we are trying to say, the complexity of an application lifecycle or application pattern has increased. Today. And mostly while I'm taking them to the cloud because a lot of cloud native architecture is going to support the cloud native resource is going to support the microservice service based deployment. Like we talk about AKS. Azure Kubernetes service in context of Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform, or maybe a container app, or maybe a container instance. So where we can go and deploy the containerized application. So having said that, so we got to see that, you know, it is important because the complexity of my application has increased. Primarily, we are talking about the microservice based architecture where you have to deal with more than one API from a single application. So you need to monitor them independently. You need to monitor independently for their respective performance. That you can fix or you can eliminate the bottlenecks that you may encounter or getting performance from those APIs. So until you do not know what to be eliminated, what to be fixed, so you can't help anything to your application. So to take a action, you know, to take an actions by knowing data coming from an application is something what we are going to discuss now. And technical term that is being used in context of monitoring is called as a telemetry data. So telemetry data is the output collected from the system resources 
in observability. Analyzed together, this output provides a view of the relationship and the dependency within the distributed system. There are three primary data classes used very often, or we call them as the three pillar of observabilities, logs, matrix, and the traces. So starting with the log, as you can see, a log is a text record of an event that has happened, that has raised in that target application in a particular time. For example, when a block of code get executed, a log entry would be made. So what goes into the log entry? It will record the time of that code executions. The data generated by the code executions, what we call as a payload in that particular context. And who can describe about the event that has happened within your application? And while I'm storing those log informations, that may come in three forms. It could be a plain text. It could be a bit of structured like, you know, say I want a structure like property name and the values. That would be a kind of structured one, key value pairs, or sometimes it could be unstructured, like in a form of files. The next is the matrix. So what matrix is all about? A matrix is a numeric value measured over an interval of time. For example, if my application is running on a particular environment, particular uh, a hardware, to run an application, so we need a CPU. So suppose I'm providing a CPU to run my application, so I can anticipate how much percentage of my CPU compute is being used by my application. So I said 30%, 40%, 60%, 70%. This is what the matrix, because that is always going to represent a numeric value. How many reading operations is happening on my desk per second? That is going to give me a numeric values, like say 1 million request is being read per second from the disk where my application is up and running. Something like that. So matrix is going to give us always a concrete numeric values that is going to be read from a particular parameters from underlying resources. So in our case, it would be an application. It could be database or it could be a containers it could be a microservice then we go into the traces a trace represent the end-to-end -end journey of a request through a distributed system i was just given an example some time back say in a microservice environment they may be multiple microservice is going to participate to participate to complete a transaction so i want to trace the entire workflow suppose my microservice one has started that initiations and microservice three has commit that transaction but what happened in microservice one two and three i would like to know in detail and that is all about traces. The request through a distributed system, the microservice is a distributed system. Your microservices are going to be deployed independently in a distributed environment.
And there is a keyword that is being extensively used that each operations get encountered encoded with important data called span that include the identifier who has initiated the, that particular trace from where it was generated the trace span identifier the name of the operations a start and end timestamp so when it was started and when it is completed log if and, and other index informations so i can collaborate all of them under the banner of the traces now this is the raw data that we are talking about okay i have collected the log i have collected the matrix i have collected the trace because eventually that is that would be given to me as a data and we call them as a telemetry data because that is being read from a particular parameters the cpu percentage is one of them the event data that was raised in a particular time or maybe traces the entire workflow detail to complete a transaction in a distributed environment. But whatever we have collected in a form of traces from of matrix in a form of log, it's a raw data for me. Under the telemetry data. So what I'm going to do with this data because I have to I have to take a decision. By looking at those data. I have to analyze those data. I have to take an actions by looking at those data so I can do many things by just having those raw data with me. And what is the next steps of this is called as a observability. So when you talk about the observability in detail, it's just a practice of measuring the state of a system by its output. So typically in a distributed system, it is always a challenging because of their high number of independent part connected via loosely coupled communications path. And this is going to increase the number of number and the type of failure they are subjected to. It also make it hard to understand problem. In a distributed systems. What would be the current state? Or how am I going to go and in alone predict the future issues? So essentially what we are talking about, the distributed system is going to produce more unknown. Even. So. That is where the observability will come into the picture. That we can observe those data, we can anticipate those data. We can read those data. We can get insight to the data to make it more meaningful to the business, to the applications, to the customers. So measuring the state of the system. What output that has given to me is extremely important. Right. So the observability is increasingly. You know, populated today. In a distributed IT system to understand and improve their performance. So eventually what we'll do, the observability is going to use those telemetry 
that what we discussed in the previous deck to gain the deep visibility into this system, enable teams to answer a multiple or multi multitude of questions about the system behavior. In fact, the observability is a subject that I'm talking about, but yes, that can be integrated with the different intelligence tool who can analyze the data without just sitting in front of the data and doing nothing by the human. So you can give this data to some tools who can get insight to those data, who can create a dashboard to make those data more meaningful to any business that application is representing any given point in time. Now, this is what we say this observability. Now I need a tool. I have referred this. I'm just incrementally taking you that. I started talking about the importance of the monitoring. Then I was talking about what kind of data that we can collect as a telemetries that we say. But once we have collected the data from an underlying it, what I'm going to do with those data? And then that is where we talk about observability because we have to make those data meaningful. We have to really get insight to the data and bring out the insight to the stakeholder of our application. And that is a subject that I'm talking about. But how am I going to implement it? It could be a tools who allow us to do this observabilities by having data in a form of telemetries by collecting data in a form of telemetries from the underlying services. These are all well connected. So when you go and look for a tools, then we can talk about what we are going to go and discuss. Open telemetry today. So open telemetry by definition is an open source observability framework means the open telemetry is going to help us to do the observabilities on the given data, the telemetries that we are going to receive from the underlying application. And this is something very important about the open telemetries, like it's going to offer a vendor agnostic or a vendor neutral API software development kits and other tools for collecting telemetry data from the cloud native application and their supporting infrastructure to understand their performance and the health. So what essentially that I'm talking about? So suppose if I have to monitor an application from Microsoft Azure. I'm just giving an example. I can make use of application insight. There is a service on Microsoft Azure that I can use to monitor an application. But can I use an application insight? An application which is running in Google or running in, you know, kind of uh, uh, in, in, in AWS. And that is where the challenge will come because these are not vendor agnostic framework. That application insight is going to work everywhere because it is specific to a particular vendor that is Microsoft. But when we say open telemetries, the open telemetry can go with any technologies. With the help of SDK, go with the, any vendors where the application is going to run, whether it is on Microsoft or whether it is on Google and whether it is on AWS. That is something very, very important about the open telemetry, the primary focus of this today's session. So why open telemetry is important? Because as far as the monitoring framework is concerned, monitoring tool is concerned, there are multiple tools that we have been using so far. But the open telemetry is an open source observability framework. It goes 
with everyone. The vendor agnostic and the vendor neutral API, software development kits and other tools for collecting telemetry data for cloud native application. That is microservice. It is not necessarily that it has to be a microservice because microservice is a talk of the town because microservice is being told as a cloud native applications going forward that is born on the cloud but microservice can be deployed in on premise also but the kind of infrastructure today we get from the cloud in order to deploy or monitor or manage microservice is completely completely different from the on premise infrastructure so that's why the cloud become the center of everything the cloud become the talking point in any context it may be in context of monitoring or it may be in context of something else so eventually what we need to understand about an open telemetry is the open telemetry is going to standardize the way the telemetry data is collected and transmitted to the backend platforms. The backend platform could be any who can take a call what need to be done on those data. So it's going to breezes the visibility gap by providing a common format of instrumentations across all services. The engineers, the developers, do not have to go and do the re-instrument means the uploading a code means updating a code if they go and change a different platform the code remains seen across the all service so they do not have to go and install a different agent who can collect the data every time a backend platform is changed. So open telemetry will continue to work as the new technology emerges, unlike the commercial solutions, which will require the vendor to build a new integrations to make their product interoperable. So it's an open like everybody can come and use as long as they want to monitor the cloud native application. So in order to implement open telemetries from our applications or to our application, this is something what we need to know as a Java developer. How am I going to incorporate open telemetries as a Python developer? How am I going to incorporate as a .NET developer? How am I going to go and incorporate this? To instrument the code for data collection. To enable the transmissions of telemetry data to a backend observability platform of your choice. Language specific all of open telemetry SDK. We are going to go and discuss to provide a bridge between the APIs and exporters. Vendor ag agnostic implementation for receiving, processing, or exporting telemetries data by the open telemetries. So open telemetry also can fit collected data into AI engine to automatically produce actionable insight. Now today, artificial intelligence workload, like suppose you are developing an AI application. AI application also can be a containerized application, also can be a microservice based application because what you are going to do in AI applications, you are going to infuse AI capabilities by by incorporating the open AI chat GPTs. You know, these are the 
emerging e e AI related uh, implementations that we can incorporate with our application. Right, so while I am going and monitoring an AI based applications from where I can make a call to the open AI or maybe a cognitive service. To do different type of processing. On different data, a data could be images, data could be a text. Data could be a videos in a form of videos or whatever it may be. So we can operate those data. For intelligent insight by using some kind of AI services. So in that context, we need to do things automatically because there are less human interactions would be made available to the AI based application because that's why it's called as an AI. So the application itself can do. Job what was done by the human some time back. So we are replacing, we are trying to replace the human by an application, but that application has to have an intelligence like human have. So in that context, the lot of automations has to be taken place. A lot of decisions making has to be taken place. So how we can automate the process by getting inside actionable inside? Like for example. So today. We talk about the driverless car. Right, so driverless car means there won't be driver, but the car is running on the road. So while the car was running on the road without a driver, if something come in front of the car, the car has to take or car has to apply the brake. And that is something actionable inside because you have collected the data as an object coming in front of the car and the car is applying that brake. That has to happen then and there. And that has to be automated. We will not ask for any human interventions because there is no human in the driving seat. So that is something automations that what we are looking up to today from the AI. So open telemetry can do this job. So it is not just going and getting the data like something has come in front of the car. And then we just go and we can sense this and we should be able to. Take an action. That is an actionable inside. Or maybe I'm continuously collecting a data. I need to look for the anomalies. Anomalies may be. The data which is not expected by the system. So if the anomalies comes that we need to take an action to take the data back to the normal. So anomalies would be always an abnormal data. Like I can take an example or abnormal the signal or abnormal temperature, abnormal pressures. This could become under the anomalies in a system. So we need to detect the anomaly then and there and we should be able to take actions for those anomalies. Implicitly not by any human intervention. So this is all what we are talking about in context of an open telemetries and the different scenarios where the open telemetries will make sense like the microservice distributed environment that we have been talking about distributed deployment. Now we are talking about the AI based application. Artificial intelligence based applications to take an actions automatically by collecting the data. Which is being. Encountered by an application. This application sends that data quickly collect this data quickly trace this data. 
and take an action. So component of this open telemetry would starting with the open telemetry API. The API is a kind of interface for the instrumentations. And it's not provide any kind of implementation, so it is just uh, connecting an API with your application. And it will be in a form of third party library or a vendor can instrument their code using the API. The SDK is very. Very important for us, like you are a .NET developer or Java developer. Or a Go developer or a Python developer, so you can just make use of those SDK. To infuse the open telemetries into your applications in order to collect the telemetries from your application while application would be up and running. So SDK for the developer is a set of libraries, set of classes and the function. Then getting into a open telemetry collectors. So receiver like processor or exporters, these are the different collectors of open telemetries. It could be in a form of pipeline. So collector would be treated as an independent agent that can receive, that can process, that can export the telemetry data. And it can receive the telemetry data in different format, including OTLP, Open Telemetry Protocol, or maybe Jager, Zipkin. Prometheus. These are a different format that would be understood by the different tools back in back end process. So open telemetry can collect the data. And they can forward those data to the forward the telemetry data to one or more observability backend. It also support the processing and filtering of telemetry data before it get exported. So this is something what exporter will go and do it filtering before we take to this. So eventually a receiver which can push or pull based how the data gets into the collector and receive many support. One or more data. The processor are run on the data between being received and being exported. Exporter is. Who can be push or a pull base again? Is how you send data to one or more backend destination. Exporter may support one or more data sources. So once your data processing is completed, data can be exported by collectors to the required destination. Same representations that we are talking about. This is what we have been data format. This is the same what I have already explained. Implementation architecture. So any kind of vendor agnostic as your AWS and Google as you can see. 
So we use a collect connector to collect data in a OTLP format from your application. The app code from the microservice one or two. It can run on top of the Kubernetes. And those data may be in a form of traces or a columns or in a time series for the observabilities that you are going to operate on those data once it is being collected. Right, so having said that, this is what the actual implementation of your uh, open telemetry connectors or open telemetry as a framework to collect and export data to the backend for processing the data for the observabilities what we are discussing so far. So having said that, because this is what nothing more than it because it's all about monitoring, collecting data, sending data to the backend service, the backend component. And it is extremely important for scenario like today's microservice deployment, the distributed deployment, since we are using open telemetries, we are talking about open telemetries, which is vendor agnostics, programming language agnostic. It goes with any programming language, any cloud platforms from where we can collect data from an underlying application. So let's look at. As a developer, because this this session I'm going to just quickly tell you as a developer how we are going to incorporate open telemetries to collect data from your applications from your microservice yes the from your any underlying resources that you are going to run on the cloud so let me go to the <laughs> my development machines. Suppose. I am going to create a, a .NET application. Just a minute. I'm going to go and create a .NET application. So I just gave me. Uh, .NET new. Web app and I just give the name. Hotel open telemetry. Web app. So I'm just creating a project by the name called. Hotel Web App. I go there. Into this folder and I can see my application there. So I want to open this in the Visual Studio Code Editor. I want to go to the program.cs. And there I want to implement 
to open telemetries. So like I can go and a little bit of change that I do in my So this is a piece. So I want to run this locally. I'm just giving a command. Dot net run. So now it is running on the local host on the port number. Five zero eight two. This is what my application. So when I browse through this applications or when I start interacting this application, it means there would be an event generated by this application. And I want to record those events and I want to analyze those events. In a form of telemetries. And I want to create a kind of dashboard. From where I can see. So what are the operations that I have performed from this particular application? Now, now we haven't incorporated any kind of. Telemetry collectors. For this applications, it's just a simple applications that I quickly develop and running on the local machines. And now I want to incorporate. Telemetry collectors, that is the open telemetry collectors into this application. So we talk about an SDK. So I just close this. I talk about SDK. That I have to incorporate whether I'm running a Python applications or a .NET applications, I have to go and install the SDK in the application folder. And the SDK name is azure.monitor.opentelemetry.asp.net core. ASP.NET core. Because we are going to build our applications cloud native. That is what the point that we are making it. It's not going to run on premise eventually. It is going to run on the cloud. So that's why the Azure monitor dot open telemetry has come into the picture. So I just go and install this to my current application. Now I can go back to the editors and I can add a couple of things from this. So I'm going to go and make a using statement on the top. So here we said import the Azure monitor open telemetry namespace on the top that I can use something out there. And we have a builder there. Below the builder of this applications, I said add an open telemetry and you get packages to an application service and configure the open telemetry to use as your monitor. So we are going to merge the open telemetry with Azure monitor. That is what it is. So we will take the advantage of the Azure monitor to present the data, but the data is going to be collected by the open telemetries. Right, so that is what we have incorporated so far. 
Now, if I'm going to go and use open telemetry with the cloud native application. If I going to go and use this with the cloud native applications that we can see right there. So we have to go and use the Azure monitoring service. To incorporate them. So let's go and to the Microsoft Azure. I will go to the all service. And I'll go to the monitor and I'll create an instance of an application inside. Application inside. He said that create an application inside resource to monitor your live web applications. With application inside, you have full observability into your application across the component and the dependencies to your complex distributed architecture. So open telemetry will have their own kind of tools and the endpoint through which we can see a dashboard. I don't need to take the help of application inside to create a dashboard for the open telemetries. Open telemetry will have their own. So we are going to see that, but here we are talking about more on the cloud natives because if we are trying to integrate the open telemetry with the cloud native applications, mainly for the microservice. The mood point what we are discussing as an open telemetry is as an implementations. I don't have to go and incorporate with Microsoft application inside. But this webinar we are going to primarily only talking about how open. Telemetries is being. Used by the cloud native application, the microservices. It's primarily the micros from the Microsoft Azure. So I just go and create this application inside so I can say demo resource group. I'll give the name of hotel app inside. And I'll go with the classic without creating an workspace. And the rest I'll be keeping in the default. So that is getting deployed. So currently I am in this application inside resource that we have deployed and I do have a connection string. So I go to the connection string. I just get one notepad. I just put that connection string in the notepad. So this is the connection string, what we call as an instrumentation keys and followed by the endpoint where your application inside is being deployed. But to use an application inside, you need a key, the instrument key, instrumentations key, because it's a paid service.
Sorry, I got disconnected in between, so I'm back in the meeting once again. <clears throat> OK. So hope you can hear me. I'm going to share my screen now. All right, thank you. All right, so I'm back on the screen like uh, so I have configured my applications with. Application inside connection string. And now I can go and run my applications locally. So like we did last time. So we go and say dot net run. So now application is running on the port number this one. So I can go and browse this applications and I can keep making requests on my application means keep processing some requests from my application. So now I can go back to my application inside. This is the application inside. I can just put it into my dashboard. This is my application inside. Now application inside is going to present the data that was collected by the open telemetries that we have configured. We can extensively go after an SDK and we can tell what we want also, but by default without telling what we want, the most of the request response related telemetry would be captured telemetry would be collected by the open telemetries and will be made available in application inside. Now I can go to the application inside. And I can look for the transactions. What are the transactions happen on my application? The last 30 minutes. Now it will take some time to collect the data. So it is started with the availability requests, exceptions, page view, traced. So how many requests that we made so far on my application and what are the requests? I can get the detail in some time. So I keep refreshing. So I should be able to get the number of requests here itself, so I can go from. Here also. So we need to wait a couple of minutes now to populate the numbers here. That is something that. We are going to see it. In fact, if I go to an application map also. It's taking some time to collect this data. OK, so we will be waiting for some time to see so what kind of data that we can go? This number will change. So I can go back here and keep. Refreshing that also. And in fact, I can go and. Deploy these applications into the Azure in some time from now. So I'm just going with another.
So I'm trying to log into my subscription from a private browser. Is asking me the multi-factor authentication. I have to get a code. They will send to a different email ID. So I can go and see the monitoring also there just to see in times. Fall request as of now. I will look for the application dashboard also that I can get. Some data from my application, so just a minute. So I cancel this dashboard. OK, so I'll come back uh, to this uh, telemetry in some time from now because this is all OK. Again. See. I will run one more time. So let me go to my refresh. So did two. OK, so we'll come back to see that because what we are looking for, so we are going to see the detail of. Uh, detail in the sense like uh, how many requests that we have made, I can drip down to this request and see from the. Uh, the telemetry point of views sometime. It's a problem with the browser only the telemetry data never being displayed. OK, so that is something. We will figure out when you come back uh, in some time from now. So because so whatever the data that I supposed to get, it should come quickly in in between uh, the five to six minutes. And in fact, you should be able to see the live data also when you keep uh, making requests because your applications got connected to your. Uh, uh, so you're going to go and. 
get this data here in some time from now. So I was just wondering why the data is not coming. So it is only because of uh, the browser cache problem, but we'll come back to that in some time. Now, this was a typical example what we are discussing that how my application supposed to go and provide data with the help of open telemetry because this is what exactly we are saying that so as your monitor so nothing new that we have to do in this case. All OK. Uh, one minute more. So let me try one more time by setting this connection string from the command prompt. I'll get the connection string one more time from my app inside. I will paste that connection string here. OK, so that is also one thing I can exit from here. And again, I go to terminal one more time. I go to. So I go and run it, this application. So we'll come back to our uh, source. All right, so this is fine. So in, in maybe next 10 minutes, I'll come back and see whether my data is populated or not. Uh, OK, so we'll come back and we should see that. OK, we made two requests or we can drill down into the request and basically that is what we are going to get. Nothing else can be done. So it happened multiple times in the past because of the the browser's uh, connectivity. So anyway, so there are other way also, as I said before. So if I go back to my. Another one. Tell. Now this is one of the repository that is basically talks about deploying the microservice and integrate it with 
integrated with the Kubernetes, integrated with the Docker. So you can see there is a YML file, so there would be a multiple. Uh, microservice would be deployed. So from this YML file, the Docker Compose YML file. So it's a robust one, the robust complex application with multiple microservices and where open telemetry is being incorporated. Open telemetry is being instrumented, what we call there. OK, so I am trying to. Deploy this application. on my local Docker orchestrators on my system. So this is all about creating images creating container from the images, implementing the open telemetries to collect the data from the microservices in a complex environment. This is all about a log that is happening here in the back. All are executing migrations. So you can see open telemetry demos. Again, we go back to our containers, the list of containers that got created. So I have uh, a front end of these microservices. These are all microservices, but there is a front end. So we try and browse this front end. So this is one of the microservice from a complex application deployment. So we're going to see that. Is a front end. OK, it is again going to take some time, so let me do it one more time. So since this is a very, very big application, but the idea is to tell you that how 
the open telemetries make sense to this kind of complex applications where you are going to deal with the multiple microservices with a front end and the back end microservice. So I try and open the front end to make a request. And in order to complete the request, there would be multiple microservices going to be used. But you can actually trace them. The entire transactions. From here onwards. So it takes some time. To get everything up and running. I can go back to my still here. I can refresh it. It's not yet running. Hold on, stop. So we need to. This is this time it is up and running, so I go to my front end. Yes, my application is up and running. I can go and see this the list of product. There, just a minute, just make it smaller. So you can see those product that you want to buy from the application. So you click on one of the product. So it is basically you are interacting with one of the microservices to do some activities. And uh, you should be able to go and kind of uh, internally you are going to go and capture all the activities like so we add to the card place in order and so on and so forth. So this is the activity that we are doing from the front end application. As you can see, now we can go to a different endpoint to see. Now one of the endpoint is called Jagger endpoint. OK, so that sometimes go and select a particular service. Suppose I want to see. Is the mail service invoke and I want to find a trust and you get the complete detail because there was a mail sending once you place an order. OK, so that is something that uh, you can figure out. So the Jagger is a is a kind of additional component to the open telemetry. It is used to monitor and troubleshoot the problems on an interconnected software system like microservice. So while the microservice will start communicate, we can follow the thread. So as of now, it would be too early to take and go into all the details of this suppose while you are sending an error uh, while while uh, you're sending an email there is an error and so on and so forth so all the details that you get it from here itself that is one the another one also another endpoint that is again part of the open telemetry framework sorry loads in. OK, so 
sometimes that again I am having problem with my browser, but yes, we will be giving some the visual out there. So load gen, I'm just working with to see how my application is getting the load, like number of requests and so on and so forth. So you're going to see a complete dashboard out here. So it's because of the browser a problem, so we cannot see at this moment, but we just need to hang on for some time, so we should be able to. OK, so. It's a beautiful dashboard that we are going to get. So again, I go and. Browse in a different tab. OK, so another one would be. I'll come back to this endpoint. The another one endpoint would be the Grafana. So Grafana is again an open source monitoring. A tool that is associated with your. Open telemetries. So you can go and create your own dashboard. So you have a tutorial out there, so you should be able to go and check this out. So how it can be done. So as I said before, because the last time we have gone and try and incorporate with this is what is running like whatever activity that I'm doing in my application. That is the log which is running in the back, so I can see the log on my screen. But uh, the idea here is that it's 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 all about. How this data is being taken to the, the stakeholder of an application. You know, so that is something that we are. Focusing at this moment, so stakeholder of an applications need to know everything about your applications, the complete breadth, the complete the workflows while it is getting interconnected between the microservices all can be seen all can be seen okay so i'm just copying this url with you you can also try using that not a problem so all instruction is there only but if you have your infrastructure so open telemetries with an example. OK, so this this is where we could have seen everything out there because of this. The browser. Um, compatibilities, I'm not seeing the uh, data from the. The load Zen point of view, so you should be able to go and see it. So let me refresh there yes we got my data in the previous application as i said some time so i may not get so this is what the application inside that i was talking about so the trace number five the trace was used the entire workflow 11 request is being made so far okay in fact, it is now coming into my. So I can dip down into go deep down into this, like suppose what kind of request that we are making. It's a privacy request that we made sometime, the privacy one. So it is on the top now. So if I click on that, so I can go and get the detail, the status code. That was the URL that I have requested. 
and so on and so forth. It took 3.2 milliseconds to give the response for this particular uh, request. All is working. OK, so it takes some time to populate the data back in. So you learn how to integrate the application inside with the open telemetries to collect the data from .NET or a Python applications or a Java application or maybe Go application. It is just an SDK. We just need to configure and we can explicitly go and write code what we want. But it is just an introductory webinar to make you understand it's an emerging technology that is happening because the idea of using the open telemetry is that it is language agnostic. It is the vendor agnostic, unlike all the tools from the Microsoft Azure, which is only being used by Microsoft at this moment, Microsoft platform at this moment. We cannot use it from Google or we cannot use it from AWS. But if you learn open telemetry today to monitor your applications, you can be in any platform. You should be able to use the same framework all over again without changing your code without changing your SDK. And that is the crux of this today's webinar. You know, so you must understand. So with that, we have come to an end of this today's uh, presentation. So if you have any questions so far so you can always post your questions you can talk to me directly so once again thank you everyone for joining today's webinar hope you have got insight you know what is open telemetry is all about how it can be incorporated with an applications for the cloud native directions and how this is going to benefit us in context of complex application deployment like microservice. So thank you everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for joining. So over to Chaitali if you are there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone. <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm Archie Jain. On behalf of Chetali, uh, I would like to, to I would like to extend our gratitude for your participation. I hope all the participants found today emerging technology webinar. This was hosted by Nabas Yoti, sir. If you have any question or queries, please feel, please feel free to ask us. Our speaker will do his best to provide you with answers and insights. Also, we value our feedback to continuously improve our webinar. Uh, I have shared a feedback form in the chat box. Make sure you all are filling that feedback. We will greatly appreciate it if you could take a moment to share your thoughts. Make sure all are feeling that feedback. Your, your input is essential in helping us in our future events. OK, I can upload the slide deck in the team Once meeting. Once again, thank you. Once again, thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to hearing your question and receive your feedback. Please make sure you all that feel that feedback.